Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Unfortunately, I don't really have a tutorial for you guys today, but I do want to talk about a new massive announcement from NVIDIA. And that is the announcement of their new Sana AI model, a brand new competitor to Flux and Stable Diffusion. And you guys don't know how happy this makes me that the AI image generation space is filled with so many options. Although we haven't seen an update recently from Colors and some of the other AI image generators, Flux has basically taken over as the de facto image generation model. And although there's a lot we can do with it and we're starting to get all of the tools that we're used to, ControlNet, Face ID, and so on, if you watch my previous video, which just came out, you'll know that there is a slight issue with the commercial terms. Meaning that if you want to take advantage of the dev model, which is the one that has all of these cool things attached to it, you're kind of limited by the commercial terms that Flux have set out. So the fact that NVIDIA have announced and are planning to release this brand new model gives us a lot of hope, bringing a lot of competition to the space and giving us more options. What's incredible though, is that this option might be even better than Flux. And the way that NVIDIA has released it and what this model can do might not just change how we do AI image generation, whatever we've been using it for so far in Flux, but it could completely change gaming, which, you know, is a company that NVIDIA is well known for. So let's jump into the paper and break it down a little bit. And of course, once the model is released, hopefully we'll be one of the first to have a video out on how to use the model, how it performs and so on. So this is the paper over here. The link is down in the description below. And I just want to bring your attention to a few important things. We've got a few examples here and you can definitely see the NVIDIA team being a little bit cheeky with this image right here, which is clearly a nod to the Stable Diffusion 3 logo. In fact, let's pull it up right here, right? We can see it right here, the wizard on the mountain, definitely a massive nod there. And in fact, one of the first tests that we're gonna do with this model is of course the classic girl on grass. Beyond that though, we can see that the performance is as we would expect with Flux, great text, fantastic logo generation. This is actually a really great logo, great people. We've got anthropomorphic animals over here, landscape, and just generally looking really good. The images are crisp, they're clear. A little concerned about this. This does lack some of the realism that Flux does have, but we'll see with the final model. But that's not what's great about this model. What's absolutely mind blowing about this model is that it is a 4096 by 4096 model, meaning that it generates images at four times the resolution of Flux. As you know, Flux is capped at about 1024, 1024. I think it can go a little bit higher than that. And then it starts to go a little bit wonky. SANA, which is the NVIDIA model, can go up to 4096. What's more, they're claiming to be able to do it in a fraction of the time. In fact, if we compare apples to apples, 1024, 1024 image, they claim to be able to generate it at 0 0.9 seconds compared to Flux Dev at 23 seconds. But it gets even crazier, right? They're doing this with a under 1 billion parameter model. That's right. The models that they're giving us here are actually a, a 0 0.6, and I think I saw a 0 0.3. There's a 1.6 model and a 0 0.6 model, meaning that the smaller model, which again, they're putting here 0 0.9, can perform on a 16 gigabyte video card. For those of you who were struggling with Flux Dev and you had to use a quantized model, this is a great alternative. And if you've got a more powerful model that leaves a ton of VRAM overhead for all kinds of other things that you wanna do if you're working with the 1.6 model, which again, they claim is up to par with Flux. So how are they doing this? They're doing this, number one, by changing up their A, or I'm guessing this is the same thing as the V, from 8X to a 32X one, meaning that they can work with larger images. So the compression is a lot higher. And in doing so, they reduce the number of latent tokens. Basically, it means it's more efficient. They're changing up the way that they use attention and they're changing the text encoder. Flux Stable Diffusion 3, they both use the T5 text encoder. SANA is gonna be using a large language model, as a matter of fact. They're using the Gemma large language model, which looks like is giving that amazing textual performance. And we can see right here, if we're looking at the paper, they're comparing their 0.6 six model to the flux 12 billion, which correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that's the pro model, right? Isn't the dev the 6 billion model and the pro is the 12. So I'm excited. I want to see what this can do. And, and they claim here being 20 times smaller and hundred times faster. You can run this on a 16 gigabyte GPU. Uh, then the paper goes in here a little bit about their deep compression auto encoder. So you can see the original image and how it's compressed. Uh, and th there's almost no loss in the quality of the images when it's compressed 
in Tusana. They've got some information here about how they use linear attention, more efficient training methods, and then the overall performance numbers against other models, including Pixar, Lumina, Playground, Hunyuan, uh, Flux, and Stable Diffusion 3. And we can see here that with significantly less parameters, they are producing significantly better numbers. And here's an example of it running on a GPU. There we go. So you can see here, it, this looks like automatic 11.11, uh, which is great for us. It means that we'll be able to run it up quite easily. And here it is generating a bunch of images. Now, earlier I talked about why this is such a big deal. Well, first of all, let's start by answering the question, why is Nvidia releasing these models? At the end of the day, Nvidia is a graphics card company releasing more models, which we've seen with their large language model Pneumatronic, which was also just released and apparently blows ChatGPT 4.0 out of the water. Now with Sana, which seems to be blowing Flux out of the water. If these models are out there and people are using them, they're using Nvidia GPUs. It's that simple. But this goes a step further, right? If we have now the 0.6 billion parameter model able to generate 1024 by 1024 images in less than a second, 0.9 second, what happens when this model needs to start generating 512 by 512 game textures. Aha! So could be the very first step to leading into genuinely fully AI generated games. And that's really exciting because, you know, we've seen a couple of opportunities messing around with 3D models that are AI generated and there's some workflows where you can generate textures using AI for your game. But what about generating them on the fly? This is what this model could potentially bring to the table. And what's more is it could be doing it locally, right? So imagine that you're a game developer, you've come up with a game and you wanna create a handful of scenarios. Let's call it a 2D game, right? And depending on the choices, you either end up in a dark light or a different thematic environment. You can have the AI generate the textures for you on the fly based on the decisions that you've made as a player. And I think that's absolutely mind-blowingly amazing. It's still early days in this technology, but I have a feeling this is the direction that Nvidia is heading in. And we could really expect to see games change massively in the next, I was gonna say decade, but the way things are going, five years. I'm planning to do a 2024 recap later this year to go over all of the AI developments that we've had in a year. And it, it's really quite incredible. So as I was putting this video together, a link or a G radio was released by Nvidia with Sana where we can try it out. And at around the same time, so did Stable Diffusion 3.5. So I'm gonna go in and have a look at some examples of Sana running some prompts from Prom Crafters, uh, one of the common sponsors of the channel, uh, as well as Stable Diffusion 3 and Flux, so that we can see how Sana performs against all of the contemporary models out there. So let's do that real quick. So I have pre-rendered all of the images just so that we can save on time, but uh, the link for this will be in the description down below. And this is what the G radio looks like. What we've done is we've grabbed uh, a bunch of the prompts, uh, dropped them in here, and tried them out on Stable Diffusion 3, Flux 1.1 Pro, and Flux Dev. And you can see here, Sana does not pass the girl on grass test. Not completely, anyway. There are a few good iterations, which I'll show momentarily, but here are some of the prompts that we tried out. Okay, so I grabbed this first one from the Prom Crafters database. Uh, we have some examples here of what it looks like on Mid Journey, as well as a couple of Flux previews, but let's have a look at what it looks like on the other models. So we can see that the output for this particular prompt is pretty good across all, mo all models. Uh, the Sana one came out really well, as did the Stable Diffusion 3 one, very nice and crisp. And here we have the Flux options as well. In fact, the Flux 1.1 is the one that performed most poorly. Uh, I did not particularly like the style and the lines that came out of it. And I'd have to say that the point here goes to Dev, Stable Diffusion 3, and Sana. I ran one more iteration on 1.1, and even though the seed was completely different, the character, this is what's really fascinating about this. You know, the same prompt gives us completely different characters across all the different models, but yet, when you run the generations again, the character style remains consistent, okay? Here's another character description, uh, a lot simpler prompt, giving the model a little more freedom on what to do. Beautiful female D&D halfling warlock. And these are some of the examples we got. This is, a, if we look over here, the Sana one, again, it's pretty impressive. It lacks a little bit of sharpness and is definitely not a halfling, but overall, it's still a very usable and decent quality image. The prompt adherence is not quite there. Gave us an elf. So a very good looking elf, fantastic image. Again, surprisingly, 
did not get the prompt adherence for a halfling. A stable diffusion three, however, absolutely blew it out of the park. But once again, what's really shocking me about this 3.5 is the quality of the details. And I have another video coming up where we'll dive into 3.5 uh, a lot more, but just these first impressions for this comparison, very impressed. Flux 1.1, again, both Flux devs did not give us a halfling. Great images, great characters, no halfling. For this next one, we have a game character with some text. So let's see how Sana performs on that. Now, Sana did perform very badly on this. However, if you look here on the G radio and we scroll down, the G radio, besides allowing us to put in a positive and negative prompt, it also allows us to select an image style. So I ran the same prompt through a variety of image styles and it did perform significantly better. So it looks like the way that the Santa model is set up is certain prompts need to be associated with a certain image style to perform well, rather than just leaving it as no style, as you'll see over here, right? So I ran it through the anime style, which eh, it's okay. Very basic level of acceptability. Uh, I'm not very happy with the eyes and the hands are not very good. Same thing with manga. And also on the anime one, you'll notice that text didn't come through. The manga one, we did get that text back, but again, there's all kinds of weirdness happening here with the image. But when we jump into fantasy art, it looks absolutely fantastic. And here's that same prompt when compared with Stable Diffusion 3. Uh, again, we do have some issues with the hands. So uh, mediocre image overall, and uh, I ran it twice. So here's the other one. This one did perform a lot better, but they still seem to have a few issues that they need to fix with hands. Flux 1 and Flux Dev, uh, as usual, performed absolutely phenomenally. No issues, almost no issues with the hands. Interestingly, completely different art style. The Dev one gave us this, you know, full character, definitely in line with what could be game art. Whereas 1.1 really feels more like concept art or cover art rather than actually game art. And finally, we did the girl on grass test. Now here, Flux, both Dev and Pro performed absolutely phenomenally, blew it out of the park. Sable Diffusion 3, we do see some improvements, but they still haven't quite been able to get this test over the line. And same thing with Sana. We have a couple of hits, a couple of misses, not able to do this test. I guess that means this model is a complete and utter failure. No, I I'm just joking. The images are relatively decent. Again, for a 1.6 billion model that is able to generate images at this speed, I think it's very decent, especially considering the fact that this will be able to run on what they claim will be potato PCs. We'll have to wait for the actual weights to come out so that we can test it out on real life hardware, but this gives a first impression at the new model on the market. If you guys try it out, please do drop by the Discord and drop some of the images. I'd love to see them. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you're as excited for Sana as I am. If you wanna talk about Sana or when it comes out, you wanna share any of your creations, please do come by our Discord. We love having you guys there. And if you wanna support the channel, please do come and check out the Patreon. If you wanna get these videos ahead of schedule or you wanna get access to some of the premium workflows and extras that we have for our patrons, you can do so over there. Your support helps me make these videos. Thanks, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.